on with you guys. I also try to get an understanding of what innovation is. Actually, in the lighter vein, we are all very good at inventing lies and probably innovating on reasons, excuses. I'll just start with a very light instant. You might have read about it also. A boss at an office asks his subordinate one day, hey, do you believe in life after death? The subordinate said, no, no, sir. That is all superstition. I don't believe it. Then the boss said, I also didn't believe all these years. But yesterday, I suddenly started believing. Why, sir? I met your grandfather, whom you said had died last week. <laughs> so, that is where our innovation seems to be really at its best. But there are many other places where I think we have opportunity to be innovative. Let's take a look. These are just academic definitions. I picked them up from Wikipedia. I'm not ashamed to say that. Yeah. We can just look, restrict ourselves to this little thing. Use of a better and novel idea or a method. No. And yes, doing something different. This is, in fact, bulk of my talk will be on doing something different. People who have done something different. Let's go on. And yes, already there have been a few references to what invention is and what innovation is. And of course, here is something about improvement as well. Like I said, my source is Wikipedia. Now, our country, I'm afraid, for far too long, other than paying lip service to the downtrodden sections of society, we have done precious little. Doesn't matter whether it's politicians or ordinary people. In 65 years, all that I can see is this. The educated middle class has perhaps become more and more self-centered, more self-seeking, and is less and less worried about the rest of the society. And we are now at a situation where we need to look at all of this. All of the political violence that you see in different parts of the country, there is one root cause for that. It is deprivation. It is poverty. It is the yawning gap between the rich and poor. And we have to look at it. The engineering community in particular has a big role to play in this. Let me explain. And just a moment, talking of innovations, no, everything need not be invention. The 60s was the time when the government of India was tom toming everywhere about the need to control population, family planning, and whatnot. You know, eventually, what the most effective way of achieving population control is, you won't believe it. And it probably came from the demographers, from the economists, from the social scientists. Improve women's literacy, population will come down <laughs> in the next generation. OK, that's an innovative idea, and it worked. Same way, it is the chief ministers of Tamil Nadu, at least two of them can be mentioned in this context, the late Kamaraj and the late MGR. The free meal scheme at school, it was not charity. It achieved a tremendous purpose. What did it do? It increased the enrollment of schools. Today, in Tamil Nadu, if I remember right, the figure 97% of the school-going children of that age, they are enrolled. These are cases where one innovative idea, I mean, it's not obvious, 
the effect that it brings, the benefit that it brings is enormous. Okay, so those are two excellent examples of innovation. Now let's move on to a few innovators in this country. Ever heard of this person? My generation, everybody would know. He was a hero. This person from Coimbatore, does it sound interesting? Edison of India manufactured the first electric motor in India, shaving blades, distance adjuster and film cameras. In fact, talking of innovations, the grinder which makes your idli mao, dosa mao, etc. It's an Indian invention. It's something which is entirely homegrown. And it's something which you can feel proud of. You don't all the time have to, uh, all the time you don't have to be thinking about going to Mars. <laughs> no. Heard of this gentleman, I'm proud to say he's an IIT alumnus. Badri would know him. What did Balaji Sampath do? He did a B.Tech in IIT, in electronics, if I remember right, went abroad, got a PhD, and what did he do after that? He's out and out into education for rural children. I do not know how many of you know that there are several schools in the rural area where there is a severe shortage of teachers, and there are many cases where class one, class two, class three, there will be one teacher going around. All that the teacher can do is Look at the book and write in the notebook whatever is there in the book. Nothing more is possible. No teaching is possible. Three classes and one teacher. And while I was talking to a teacher of a rural school about this recently, he said, sir, it has become worse. There was one of these cases where even the single teacher who was there had to go out somewhere. So the ayah who was to look after the noon meals came was asked to take care of the classes. So what is the result of that? 64% of the children in fifth class cannot subtract two digit numbers. 55% of the children in grade five cannot read the headlines of a Tamil newspaper. <laughs> and we say literacy. Now, Balaji Sampath started a movement. He travels extensively over Tamil Nadu, probably even neighboring states. And yes, goes around educating, and he's realized that it's not enough if you talk directly to the children that you have a numbers problem. He also trains teachers. Several initiatives, Makkal Palli, I think the name is self-explanatory, improve the quality of primary and science education in rural India. He demonstrates the practical examples, really gets the children fired up on science. But this is also innovation, right? Which will contribute tremendously to giving real education to our rural children. Then, you probably heard of the White Revolution. The father of the White Revolution is the work is good. Just one quick thing, because I don't have time to run through the slide fully. One of the Challenges in the early days in this uh, organizing collection of milk from rural areas and distributing in the cities came about is this. Many of the farmers were extremely poor. They did not even have money to feed the cattle. And one of the moves taken at a very early stage was we'll pay them weekly and not after getting the milk, but before getting the milk. Every week, an advance payment was made so that the farmer's poverty was taken care of, and that in turn encouraged the animals to be in better health, the milk yield to increase, and that is where it all began, and it's made great strides. You know today where the dairy industry stands in this country. All of us have a vexing water problem, and this year, for example, there is a severe concern over the failing monsoon. What did Shekhar Raghavan do? A physics professor, a social entrepreneur, rainwater harvesting. You all heard about it. And I, I may mention here, for example, the current chief minister of Tamil Nadu in her earlier tenure imposed rainwater harvesting structures in the houses in Tamil Nadu. A lot of people 
cribbed, moaned, and groaned. And later on, they said, we are thankful to her. Because of her, today there are there is water in our wells, and we are able to survive. And yes, the other, not to forget, ecological sanitation. Some parts of it which I can't explain in public, but there is at least this much you know. As we move more and more into the disposable culture, we are generating so much of garbage, so much of solid waste, and you know the kind of protest it brings about wherever you dump it. Right? So you would understand that we have to look at the ecological angle as well here. Heard of this gentleman? An engineering graduate from AC Tech. But you know what he did? There is this village quite close to Chennai. A place which was full of bootleggers, anti-social elements, and it completely transformed that. Cottage industries, handicrafts, whole lot of stuff. He made the village self-sufficient, and he's become a cult figure in that scene. He's projected on NDTV and channels like that. Made a huge difference to rural welfare. And here's another gentleman, Namarwar, into organic farming. Today, you know the extent to which we are killing ourselves with fertilizers and pesticides and insecticides and whatnot. And you know that already the awareness has come. But way before the current awareness, Namarwar had done quite a bit into organic farming. The important points to note, ecologically sound, sustainable, poison-free food production. You've all heard of the extent to which DDT has permeated. It's time that we looked at all of these and found new solutions. Many of the time you'll find that you can actually draw inspiration from our traditions that existed 100 years ago. So he's gone a great distance in this. A few examples in the last two minutes. Let me. Shakti Mahindan in Tamil Nadu, hand operated water lifting pump. In fact, something that many of you might have known the ordinary atmospheric pressure is 10 meters. So you can't originally pump water up from more than that. Type. But today we have Mark II pumps which concentrate pipes which can bring out water from much deeper levels. Here is another one where as you are pumping water, there is also a facility for cattle to drink water through this water which collects here from the chute. A bamboo turning lathe. The normal lathe is something which all of you understand, but wood turning lathe and in particular the bamboo turning lathe is an innovation which came from the currently in news northeastern state. A solar mosquito destroyer, a wood stove. Can you build, believe that this is a varaga dipper? It is. Okay. With point two, let's say reduce heat loss, increase efficiency. It's not that all the time you have to be talking about only about microwave ovens and how their efficiency can be increased. These are the ones which can touch the remote villages of India. And of course, on the social entrepreneur front, we have had quite a few. Somebody into education, somebody into nursing. And where would I expect my young engineering aspirants to go to? Coding, testing, maintenance. Hmm? Yeah, the reason I said education was, I would also look at composite education, where apart from what <laughs> the, the rote learning and the exam that students are going to. I want classes for arts, sports, crafts, everything. That I would call is holistic learning. Yes. And that is what is vanishing. Now everything is theory class. Finish portions. Now that is the obsession. And that finishing portion has nothing to do because the children don't learn anything. We have to get out of that obsession. 